These are overrated. Wait, before leaving a dislike and clicking away, please hear me out. Because I promise this isn't a video about me comparing my SM7B to the Blue Yeti and complaining about why the Blue Yeti doesn't actually sound as good as the SM7B. The Blue Yeti, the best streaming microphone. But what if I told you that there are in fact better options out there? Yes, yes, I know, sounds crazy, right? And just a disclaimer before I begin, when I say the Yeti is overrated, I'm not saying it's awful because it's by no means a bad microphone. The Yeti is primarily used for streaming and podcasting, but I'm here to say why it's probably not the best for those applications and offer some alternatives that might save you some money. Also, until stated otherwise, I will be using the Blue Yeti to record the next couple of sections since if I'm talking about the Yeti, I might as well use the microphone, you know? So, without further ado, let's get into why the Blue Yeti is probably not the best microphone for streaming and podcasting. If you're using the Yeti for just podcasting or streaming, then you're basically wasting money on three polar patterns that you're never going to use. If you don't know what a polar pattern is, then allow me to briefly explain. Polar patterns determine how a microphone will pick up audio. So an omnidirectional microphone will pick up audio all the way around it in 360 degrees, while cardioid will only pick up what's in front of it. When you're gaming, you're almost always going to want to be on cardioid mode. That way your keyboard isn't as loud as your voice. Same goes for podcasting, because most of the time you're just going to need to pick up what's in front of the mic, unless you're trying to get multiple people with the omnidirectional mode. Like I said earlier, if you're not going to be using any of the other polar patterns, you're essentially wasting money since you could just buy a microphone with the cardioid polar pattern and save yourself a few bucks. If you are dead set on a Yeti though, and all you're planning on doing is streaming and podcasting, I would definitely recommend the Yeti Nano. It's cheaper, but it only has two polar patterns, so that way you're not wasting money on polar patterns that you're not going to be using. I'm now going to talk about two different types of microphones, condenser microphones and dynamic microphones. Condenser microphones are usually going to give you a more natural and warm sound, but more often than not require a treated room so that they don't pick up background noise. While dynamic microphones will give you a more broadcasty sound, since most radio stations use them. They also do a great job at background noise rejection. And yes, I know, that was a very brief description of the two, but if I took the time to sit here and talk about all the different characteristics of them, we'd be here for about 30 minutes, so I'm going to keep it short and just leave it at that. My problem with the Blue Yeti is that it's a condenser microphone, meaning you're going to need a treated room for it to sound great, which most people who use the Yeti don't have. If you don't want to listen to me, here's PewDiePie's take on it. Yeah, it's, no, it sounds great. <laughs> I swear to god, it is the Blue Yeti, isn't it? It only works if you're in this isolated room, right? Yeah, people love it for some reason. It's such a piece of sh Unless you want the sound of that ice cream truck driving in your stream, I'm going to suggest a less sensitive microphone. I always recommend a dynamic microphone over a condenser for podcasting and streaming if you don't have a sound-treated room. If you couldn't tell, I'm recording in a non-sound-treated room right now. That's why my voice sounds so echoey when I'm using the Yeti. But hey, you could always podcast or stream from under a blanket. I mean, that will at the very least make it sound less echoey. And for those of you who are asking, if recording under a blanket makes you sound less echoey, why aren't you doing it? And the answer to that question is, I'm actually using an isolation booth right now. My room is just extremely empty because I moved into a new apartment, so sorry about that. And before someone gets their jimmies rustled about this whole condenser versus dynamic part, of course if you're doing voiceovers and you can edit the background noise out, then a condenser microphone will probably be better for you. I'm mainly talking about podcasting with multiple people in a room, or streaming where it's just not possible to edit background noise out. Also me personally, I just like the sound of dynamic microphones better, sorry. The Blue Yeti falls into the USB category, but spoiler alert, XLR microphones are usually going to give you better audio quality. This USB versus XLR thing has been done to death, so I'm going to try and keep this section short. USB microphones have their place. They're good beginner options since most are just plug and play, USB microphones tend to be on the cheaper side, and they're easier to travel with. With that being said, an XLR microphone paired with an audio interface is almost always going to deliver better audio quality. XLR mics are also going to be more upgradable, because if you wanted you could just buy a new audio interface or preamp to up your game. You can't really do that with a USB microphone besides just buying a better mic. There's definitely more learning that goes into XLR microphones, but I promise this isn't as scary as it looks. I think if you're looking to take anything seriously, you should definitely look into an XLR mic, but if you're just making content for fun, a USB microphone will do just fine. 
Now, if you are looking to step up your game, here are what I believe to be better alternatives to the Yeti. The best budget alternative I can think of is the Samson Q2U. Now, I'm sure you podcast enthusiasts out there are probably saying, wow, such an original pick, but it's recommended by a lot of people for a good reason. This microphone is fantastic, and it comes with just about everything you would need to get started. A stand, a windscreen, a USB cable, and an XLR cable. On top of that, it's both a USB and XLR microphone, meaning you could upgrade down the line if you wanted to improve your setup by getting an audio interface. Now, if you wanted to step up your game, you could get the Q2U with a budget interface for under or a little over, depending on if something is on sale, what the Yeti retails for. The Behringer UMC22 only goes for about $70, meaning you could have an XLR setup for around $125, give or take. And down the line, say you want to upgrade. Well, you can with this setup. You could swap out a mic or an interface, and it would sound even better. Also disclaimer, but I'm not using the UMC-22 right now. I'm using a Moto M2. I don't actually have a UMC-22 on me, so sorry about that. And since we're on the topic of audio setups, if anyone is wondering, here's what I personally use. And just for the record, I'm not comparing my gear to the Blue Yeti because of course my expensive setup is going to sound better than the $130 USB microphone. I use a Rode Procaster with the Moto M2 interface. For boom arm and shock mount, I use the PSA1 and PSM1 respectively. And for pop filter, I use the WS2. Now, this isn't the greatest audio setup by any means, but it gets the job done. So in conclusion, the Blue Yeti is not awful, but it's certainly overrated. And I'll say this one last time because I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea. I don't think the Yeti is a bad microphone. If you use one, I'm sure it sounds fine. I'd also like to clarify that I can't speak for how the Yeti does with acoustics or even music in general. Sorry, I don't really make music. This is definitely one of the more risky videos I've made. Most of my content so far has been pretty safe to say the least. So if you enjoyed, a like would always be appreciated. And if you have any suggestions on how I can improve my content, feel free to comment down below, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video, if it doesn't take a month to come out. Sorry.